Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be his name, name now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his, his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, if it is all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of new beginnings, give us courage to turn and joyfully follow you into new adventures of faithful service. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that 
all of you should be in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and at the same and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Christus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize but to proclaim the gospel, and not the eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 4th chapter, beginning at verse 12. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our Saviour. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, 
Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, he casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Redeemer, 
we shall establish God's rule. That time is now fulfilled in the person of Jesus the Redeemer. Jesus takes up John's message of repentance that calls humankind to believe in the good news that he teaches with such amazing authority. In announcing the good news, Jesus re-emphasizes John's two demands, repent and believe. Repentance requires a life change and a transformation of heart and mind. The Holy Spirit gives us a repentant heart, a true sorrow and hatred for sin and its consequences, and a firm resolution to avoid it in the future. Jesus' teaching ministry is about the love of God for each and every one of us. God's love is about peace, of hope, of better things to come, of truth, of promise, of immortality, and the good news of salvation. That is liberty from sin and freedom to live as one, as sons and daughters of God. The gospel points to the power and wisdom of God, power to change and transform our lives, and wisdom to show us how to live as sons and daughters of our Father in heaven, that is, children of light. Through Jesus Christ and through grace, we receive the gift of eternal comfort and hope, and our hearts are strengthened in every good work and word. Second Thessalonians. Jesus is the God of hope, and through the leadership of Jesus, our lives are filled with hope in abundance by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is with joy that in this hope we share in His glory. It is a strange phenomenon of human nature that it turns its back on the hope of glory in Jesus Christ and follows wicked desires to kill, murder, steal and to harm other people. Wars break out to flex muscles and display power and satisfy greed. Wars are justified on the basis that they will bring peace. Is that what is happening in the war in Russia with the invasion of the Ukraine? Is there peace? And all the other wars that are recorded in, in history. Does anyone know why there is war in Lebanon? In Syria, I've forgotten. Thomas Merton teaches that the only real liberation is that which liberates the oppressor and the oppressed. Hope is about when the oppressed is able to be free within him or herself, so that strength may come to pity the oppressor. We live in a period where there is little or no compassion and where the rich drink Johnny Walker Blue Label whiskey while millions die of hunger. Good morality is a hugely forgotten aspect of life and, the root, and at the root of it all is the lack of imagination. If we had imagined that we were doing that what we were doing in the policies that destroy jobs rather than creating them, it would have been to be it would have had to be stopped. But the images of hungry children and single parents are forgotten until an election is about to happen. Clearly hope is misplaced by hoping in politicians as opposed to hoping in Jesus and his power to bring about meaningful, loving outcomes. Sartre writes, I am more and more convinced that in the life of civilizations, as in the lives of individuals, too much matter that cannot be digested, 
too much experience that has not been imagined and probed and understood ends in total rejection of everything, ends in isolation. The structures break down and there is nothing to hold on to. It is understandable that at such times religious fanatics arise and the fundamentalists rise up in fury. Hatred rather than love dominates. How does one handle it? The greatest danger, as I see it in myself, is the danger of withdrawal into private worlds. We have to keep the channels in ourselves open to pain. At the same time, it is essential that true joys be experienced, that the sunrise not leave us unmoved. For civilization depends on the true joys, all those that have nothing to do with money or affluence, nature, the arts, human love. We struggle to imagine any eternal greatness within us. But the biblical pattern of incarnation always has God, as guised as hiding inside of littleness, ordinariness, and seeming insignificance. God seems to want us to do the desiring and all the discovering that we can do this in the simplicity of our daily lives. No one finds God who is not looking for God and willing to go behind the curtain of our hearts to find God. Jeremiah writes in the book of Lamentations, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Jesus teaches about love, and one of love's children is hope. We too should become children again, for a child is love, simply for being, simply for smiling. Receive Jesus' love as a pure, free gift. <coughs> And so as Christians we celebrate life fully aware that fear and love, joy and sorrow, tears and smiles can exist together. Jesus' message is for us to open our hearts to the indwelling Holy Spirit. It seems that after our baptism many of us drew a curtain around our hearts and hid out the Holy Spirit behind the Spirit. And this is the darkness we encounter. To live in cooperation with God is to live inside of an unexplainable hope because life will now feel much larger than before and we more, are more in true selves than ever before. We might say that hope is essentially the availability of a soul which has entered intimately in us into the experience of communion to accomplish in the teeth of will and knowledge the transcendent act. <coughs> this transcendence is the constant and consistent experience of those who have moved out of darkness into light. These people almost unanimously remember their darkness and repeat Jacob's enlightened statement. God, you were here all along, and I never knew it. St. Augustine puts it like this, Late have I loved you, O beauty, so ancient and so new. For behold, for you were within me, and I was outside. Then he wrote, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And true it writes, unless we are very, very careful, we do each other by holding on to images of one another based on preconceptions that are in turn based on indifference to what, other, what is other than ourselves. This indifference can be in its extreme a form of murder and seems to me a rather common phenomenon. We claim autonomy for ourselves and forget that in so doing we can fall into the tyranny of defining other people 
as we would like them to be, by focusing on what we choose to acknowledge in them, we impose an insidious control on them. I notice that I have to pay careful attention in order to listen to others with an openness that allows them to be as they are. Always to think themselves to be. The shutters of my mind habitually flip open and click shut, and these little snaps form into patterns I arrange for myself. The opposite of this is inattention, of this inattention is love, is the honoring of others in a way that grants them the grace of their own autonomy and allows mutual discovery. The everyday human gesture is always a heartbeat away from the miraculous. Remember that ultimately we make things happen through our actions, way right beyond our understanding or intention. That our seemingly small, ordinary human acts have untold consequences. That what we do in this world means something. That we are not nothing. And that our most mundane human actions by their nature burst the seams of our intent and spill meaningfully and radically through time and space, changing everything. Our deeds, no matter how insignificant they may feel, are replete with meaning and of vast consequence, and they constantly impact upon the unfolding story of the world, whether we know it or not. <coughs> Rather than feel impotent and useless, we must come to terms with the fact that as human beings, we are infinitely powerful and must take responsibility responsibility for this tremendous power. Even our smallest actions have potential for great change, positively or negatively. And the way in which we all conduct ourselves within the world means something. We are anything but impotent. We are in fact exquisitely and frighteningly dynamic. And with all respect, we have an obligation to stand up and take responsibility for the potential which is our ordinary and urgent duty. The Holy Spirit gives us grace to see our sin for what it is, the rebellion and rejection of the love of God. God's grace helps us to turn away from all that would keep us from His love. Faith is an entirely free gift which God makes us. Believing is only possible by grace and the help of the Holy Spirit who moves the heart and converts it to God. The Holy Spirit opens the eyes of the mind and takes it and makes it easy for us to accept and believe the truth. To believe is to take Jesus at his word. To believe that God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten Son to redeem us from the slavery of sin and death. It is probably not wrong to say that everyone cherishes the reality of belonging, of relationships, of community, of dependence and independence. Therefore, it is imperative for me to base all my values and beliefs according to Jesus' teaching. If I don't begin my life from that strong standpoint, I'm soon engulfed in the darkness. The cries of John the Baptist of, and of Jesus to repent thus comes to the fore. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer.
Let us pray using form B of the prayers today. On page 112 of your prayer book, if you've got one at home. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and to give thanks for all people. Receive our prayers for the Universal Church, that it may know the power of your Spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. We pray for your servant, Steve, our Bishop, together with Tarbell, our Metropolitan, and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments, that by their life and teaching, your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you. Guide and prosper, we pray, those who strive for the spread of your gospel and enlighten with your spirit all places of work, learning and healing. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations, that ruling with wisdom and justice, they may promote peace and well-being in the world. To this congregation to, and to all your people in their different callings, give your heavenly grace that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts and serve you truly all the days of our life. In your compassion, Father, comfort and heal those who are in trouble sorrow, need, or sickness. We praise and thank you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the heroes of the faith in every generation. And we remember before you your servants who have died, praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your unending joy. Grant this, Holy Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. 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 holy incarnation, our Lord Jesus comes into our life to give us love, joy and peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace, peace be with, with you. you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin, when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people, when you enthroned him with you in heaven, and through him sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. 
And now we give you thanks, because by the power of the Holy Spirit, you took our nature upon him, and was born of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you ask us up, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy Father, these your gifts, we your people celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. He is rising from the dead and is ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour, in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, this is not a sharing of the body of Christ. We, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb, Lamb of God, God have, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather at the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, 
and he in us. This is the Lamb of God, and this is you who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and your servant shall be healed. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, his blood, which he shed for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From a malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour I met, call me. And bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and ever living God, we thank You for feeding us in these early mysteries with the body and blood of Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by Your grace in the body of Your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to Your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father Almighty, we, we offer ourselves, ourselves to you as a, as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and with all those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.